Hello, this is Greg Allison from Galactic Gregs coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere in the Milky Way galaxy. And today we're going to talk about SpaceX and hurricanes and tropical storms and wind and weather and where SpaceX really ought to move. And I want to say this, SpaceX is very lucky. SpaceX has actually missed two bullets. And as you can see here, uh, I'm circling my cursor around Hurricane Dory, uh, Dorian when it was just offshore from Florida and coming up into Georgia, just past uh, the Cape here, Cape Kennedy, Canaveral, whatever you want to call that, or KSC. And back in here, the SpaceX campus is on that side of the country. And then over here is a, a serious tropical depression that went into Mexico, just south of Boca Chica, where the other SpaceX Starship manufacturing campus is at. Both campuses were under fire, basically, from this uh, events. So what's going on here? Maybe this is a uh, cosmic suggestion to, to Elon Musk. Musk, move. And where can Musk move? Well, I'm going to show you why there's a whole lot of sense in Musk moving to Alabama for SpaceX. So imagine that. And before we go into that, I'm going to say, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the update notification bell. And also click, check my links below to uh, support my channel. I have links down there from my sister channel, Green Rigs, and that helps me out too, because we are related, believe it or not. So uh, let's have a look at this. Two tropical storm, well, a tropical de depression and a hurricane simultaneously offshore from both of the SpaceX campuses. Camp I, I should say, right? Yeah. So uh, fortunately, Dorian had weakened, very unfortunately for the Grand Bahama Island, where it sat there for a whole day and just churned and tore that place to smithereens. But fortunately for SpaceX, the hurricane weakened significantly, and it also went farther offshore than was originally anticipated. So it was farther offshore and significantly weaker when it passed that area. It has since re-strengthened to a Category 3. So the SpaceX and Space Coast uh, area was very fortunate. I've seen video of a uh, drone flying around the SpaceX campus there in uh, Cocoa, Florida, and everything went fine. I couldn't see anything other than water. No damage uh, apparent at all. The hangar, which uh, you know would have been quite susceptible to the winds, looked perfectly intact. I didn't see, there was no visible damage that one could see from a drone or some other aircraft flying around the campus there. That said, and I would add that, you know, for starters to get things going, that's a great place to be because you're right there next to the lunch complex and that makes things simple for starters if you don't get blown away. But we already know that they built a nose cone for Starship, or for, excuse me, for the Starhopper in Boca Chica back over here they got blown over and destroyed by winds. And that was somewhat uh, less than a hurricane that hit there, just wind. You get these kind of things on the coast. Maybe it was a tropical depression at that time. But hey, it's rough on the coast when it comes to wind. And when you build large spacecraft, especially when they're not in a building, they're gonna be quite susceptible. And there are other alternatives. And that's what I wanna show you now. So let's check this out. Why Alabama? What are you talking about, Greg? Alabama? Why, gosh, that's all hillbillies, grandma and grandpa sitting on the front porch in a rocking chair, right? Huntsville, Alabama has more PhDs and more engineers per capita than any place in the free world, right in here. And guess what? Decatur, Alabama, just west of, is a major manufacturing facility. And uh, just west of Decatur is a little place called Trinity which has the largest rocket manufacturing building on Earth, as far as I know. It's the uh, ULA uh, building for building EELVs, Ex expendable, expandable launch vehicles, or excuse me, involved expendable launch vehicles, which was uh, a concept developed under contract to the Air Force. And that's where they uh, really ramped up their Delta production and Atlas productions and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it just so happens that building is extremely underutilized. Now that does belong to a competitor. So, you know, if, if Elon's gonna use that, he's gotta wait to the point that he puts them out of business and goes in and buys it. 
Well, she might get pennies on the dollar, which is a possibility, but there's plenty of a factory space up and down this river. Greg, it's so far away. Why would he want to go away up there? Simple, because there are, uh, if you go just a little way out here, oh, by the way, there's another huge factory area in Iuka, Mississippi. Iuka, Mississippi was originally going to have a nuke plant there, and uh, that plant was canceled, and it was next plan. Everything was built to build advanced solid rocket boosters there. To, re to replace uh, the solid rocket motors originally used on the shuttle. However, ATK came forward, and uh, which is now north of Grumman, and uh, fixed up the problems they had, and their fixes were accepted. But everything was built. I mean, the offices even had the pencils and the notepads and computers. Everything was ready to go when that program got canceled. The advanced solid rocket motor. It was all over politics, as most things are. Uh, however, there's huge facilities there. Some of that has been used to build large composite intertank sections for the rockets that ULA is using. And ATK, I believe, yeah, bought that to do that. And uh, it's probably now under North of Grumman. That said, those facilities and areas are far underutilized. There's probably a lot of capacity there that somebody could contract into. There's a factory capacity up and down this river, especially in the Decatur, maybe in the Florence area, where a guy like Elon could go in and operate. Why would he want to be there? Operating costs are cheap. Operating costs are dirt cheap in this area compared to Hawthorne, California, uh, the Space Coast, and maybe even Boca Chica, Texas, where you don't have a lot of probably resources to back up. But yeah, we have industry in this area, lots of industry. So you can get the things that you need to build stuff because industry is, is, is uh, quite prevalent in this area. And you have the Engineering Brain Trust in this area of Huntsville, Alabama. And some of it over in the Cater area too, it kind of bleeds out through the, all these communities. So you have resources, cheap operating costs, low overhead costs, low cost of living. And I would submit that's very significant because one of SpaceX key problems as I see it is retention of engineering staff. Young engineers go into SpaceX and work in Hawthorne and uh, they get great experience to come out of college, but they click that they, basically uh, punch their card for having worked there. And after a year or two, they move on somewhere else where they can make good money. Well, SpaceX don't pay them well. That's in part because SpaceX has very high operating costs in Hawthorne, California. If they can get away from that to a lower cost place, they can afford to pay their engineers more money and have better retention. Well, Greg, why does that matter? These young guys are hot and sharp and smart, right? They are, but you need corporate memory in your organization. How do you have quality programs in and a continuity of quality and reliability when people are pouring through your organization like water through a basketball hoop, for Pete's sake. You better have some continuity. He talks about flying rockets around like uh, like aircraft, you know, point to point, surface to surface on Earth, transport of people from Tokyo to LA to New York to London and things like that. And, you know, lickety split, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, you know, depending on how far you go. Maybe, you know, a little bit longer because you had to go up and go down and, you know, get on and get off and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you could go to, to Tokyo from about anywhere in 45 minutes. Take longer to plane and get off than it does to fly, maybe. So, uh, imagine that. So, uh, the problem with that, though, is he's got to have uh, reliability and he's got to have a quality program that is superb pull off something like that for the FAA to prove anything like that. And even then it's going to be a dangerous proposition because all the energy you have to put into every cubic inch of your body, every cubic centimeter, whatever you want to call it. It's like several sticks of TNT to get to those velocities and then take all the energy out safely to reland. And you're riding up on a, a controlled explosion and coming back like a meteor. Ah, which could evoke Allison's laws of rockets. Of course you are riding on a rocket. So therefore you do evoke Allison's laws of rockets. Row one, law one, Rockets go boom, law two, rockets have always go boom, and law three, rockets always will go boom. The job of SpaceX for that in instance will be to make them go boom less often. Therefore, he needs really good engineering staff, and he needs corporate memory, retention. I mean, Elon can't possibly be the man who has the brain trust for everything for so many organizations and so many activities. He's got to have good staff. And uh, one way to do that is to have lower operating costs. And I might add, engineers are happier at a little bit lower pay where the cost of living is lower. So employee retention would greatly improve in North Alabama. And Huntsville is becoming a, a pretty cheap town. You know, we have a lot of microbreweries, 
and a lot of things going on in Huntsville. So, uh, you know, his engineers would get a bang out of it, literally. And as far as transport to the Gulf of Mexico, where he could reach out to either Boca Chica or go around to the launch site in uh, the Cape or launch straight out of the Gulf of Mexico, which I'm going to show some stuff on that. There is the 10 Tom Waterway, which this map don't show, but it comes back around to this Tom Bigby River here. It comes out up here and it, it's a canal that, that comes all the way back down here. Uh, congressman, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a congressman that really pushed that, Tom Bevel. And that was established and where my cursor's running, there's a canal that runs there called the 10 Tom uh, Waterway. And you, you'll cross it when you're going up I-20 from the Tuscaloosa to like Meridianville, Mississippi. And I crossed it many times. It's quite navigable all the way up here and all the way down the Tennessee River. And uh, by the way, Elon, if you don't take this deal, uh, your uh, good friend Jeff Bezos just might see some value in this because he might realize he wants to recover asteroids and he might determine he could splash those down in the Gulf of Mexico and just bring that stuff up the rivers here to Birmingham, Alabama, where we have a uh, massive uh, metal and steel industries here or up in Gaston where there's still industries. And of course there's a steel mill in Decatur. So uh, all kind of prospects for processing asteroid and material. Now look at this. Here's Huntsville, where you got this brain trust of engineers and PhDs. Here is Redstone Arsenal, where most of them work, and I work right about in this area myself right there. And here is uh, the Garnsville Lake. Is uh, you can't see it on this diagram. This is the Wheeler Lake, really here. Uh, so the Wheeler Dam is over here, and you got another dam back over here, Pickwick Dam. Tennessee Valley Authority has backed up the Tennessee River and down. This is extremely navigable and a, a very nice waterway that people like to fish. Uh, there's spelunking caves in the area. There's all kind of things. Now, Greg. Wow, way up river. Well, it's not really that far. Water tra transport is cheap. And you can have all the manufacturing and staff up in this area bring your stuff down through Mobile. Don't go all the way back up to Cairo, uh, Illinois, Ohio River, back down the Mississippi River. You can just go straight down. Now, from here, you've got access to all kinds of shipping and oil refineries in here, uh, shipbuilding in Mobile, military activities down here. This area of the Gulf does not have. Uh, a city of oil rigs like out here is a pretty free open area because the Air Force uses it as a bombing range, perfect place to launch rockets right in this area. So Elon, you can just pull a barge right out of here and launch a rocket. Or if you really wanted to go all the way back around to, you know, Brownsville, uh, Boca Chica, you could do that. Or if you want to come around to uh, uh, back over here, you could do that too, because guess what? That's how the external tanks in the first stage, just one C of the Saturn V and I was planning to get the first state, core stage of the SLS around. It was coming down out of the Mississippi from the uh, MAF plants and, and, and activities in the areas around the shoot. Bring all this stuff down and around by barge. That's how it's done. And there's plenty of barges for doing just that. So, you know, that's a good practice. And it's all there. And from here, you can get either location easily. And if you really wanted to get the West Coast from there to take your stuff back uh, to, to Vandenberg, if you decide not to build that stuff out on the West Coast, then you've always got the Panama Canal. And uh, so, Greg, uh, well, let me show one other thing. Sectors of fire, you can launch angles like this through here uh, from the Gulf of Mexico and get equatorial orbits real nice. And uh, so if you come way out over here and you're launching across this way, so you can move your boat wherever you want it in here, you get the kind of sector of fire that you want. You can move it around. Once, uh, so if you launch over here, once you get this far, you've already staged your lower stages and, and everything's coming back. So yeah, if you launch over here, you can bring your lower stage back closer over here and your rocket's well over flat, pretty hot before it comes over this area forward. This area is not as populated. So your probability of casualty, the E sub C, which is all important to the FAA, uh, is very manageable. Now, when it comes to Ground truth in sectors of fire from the Gulf of Mexico. I've been there, done that. This is my uh, HAL 5 uh, Halo Project rocket, uh, Space Launch 2 rocket, which is presently hanging in one of those microbreweries I mentioned called Straight to L in Huntsville, Alabama. 
because we had a little snag on NASA, but we were trying to ground truth out for NASA, our club was. We had a joint mission with NASA, club did, HAL-5, on this Halo SL-2 raccoon mission. That's a hybrid rocket air launch, just like Spaceship One, Spaceship Two, except we're using a balloon instead of a white knight aircraft. And uh, that's Steve Mistakis, and that's Al Wright, both very important members of, of that team. And here I am out again on a different boat. That was the NASA Pearl River barge. The deck was 70 foot wide, 200 feet long. Made a steal on the 20th of June. It was a griddle. Oh my God, it was hot. Ah, wooden deck, much nicer. Off the C. Michael Calais. And this is our balloon launch return vehicle here. And this was done through a spinoff company called the High Altitude Research Corporation, which I'm president of. And that little blonde tuft of hair with his hand up on the tail end of the rock. Okay, that's probably Gene Hornbuckle there. But I'm standing right there ahead of my hand on it too, as did uh, the late, great Glenn May. I think that's the mistake is there. Uh, and this is the balloon launch return vehicle. And that's a shoot, and the balloon's already up in the sky. And we're at the, and this is way out in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's it on ascent. Blue Knights return vehicle, the blue. And this is our cheap access to space rocket, the Cats Prize, uh, which was a raccoon rocket also. And we're 200 miles out in the Gulf of Mexico on a boat called the Mr. Offshore. So I know somebody with a little experience about going to the Gulf of Mexico for launches. So Elon, if you need a little help with this, hey, you might be able to give me a call. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to stop share on this presentation there. And let's see, let's do a share on uh, Google Earth if I can find it. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, there it is. Now, if you're wanting to bring things back uh, and say, like if you're cast an or with a heat shield uh, that's made for aero breaking, that's maybe puffed up with some injected air or gases from the leftover from the processes of process and materials uh, and some kind of reentry conic or biconic reentry vehicle and let's say you build it where it would float when it splashes down but in case it don't float and breaks and sinks you might want shallow waters to sink it in well guess what we're off the coast here i mean if you look down here you can watch the the, the numbers for how deep it is right look at it, minus two feet in some spots i mean look here uh you get off the coast, and, and, and it's reasonable. This is good diving distances down. You get in this area. Elon, if you can bring stuff back with precision coming from deep space uh, that you do a same percentage of landing on a deck of a barge, uh, look here, minus 10 feet, 14 feet, in a relatively unpopulated area next to it, that's sweet. Or if you're really, really, really good, Elon, and I'm going to make this proposal to Mr. Bezos, which just seem a little bit more of these in us. I'll do a presentation like this for Bezos. Look here, minus four or five foot in this area right here. That's a pretty good size area. You got really good, really good precision. You can get approval for that. You're right inside the Mobile Bay where all the shipbuilding industries up in here. And right up the river, right up to Birmingham, right up to uh, go around to Tin Tom to, to, to Mo, uh, Decatur. Or go to Gadsden, all kind of metal processing facilities in those areas, steel mills and such. So you got all those things you're looking for. So uh, point is, Alabama has more to offer than any other state for somebody wanting to launch a venture like that because of easy access right in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, the rivers, the canals, the brain trust in Huntsville, the manufacturing facilities, the low cost of overhead. Hey, what more could you ask for, Mr. Musk? So if I stay down there and get battered by the storms, eventually you're going to need a bigger campus to build all those starships you want to build, especially when you go to version two. That thing is huge. You need places to do that. So uh, consider that. Even if you just go up the river here a little ways, get a little off the coast. If your vehicle is so big, it, you know, 59 feet in diameter, if you're worried about getting it down the river, I think you can still get it through all that. But Hey, you could you could go up the river a little bit, or even in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, even inside the uh, Mobile Bay, you are uh, far more sheltered than you are 
out here in Titusville area. We're down here at Brownsville, Boca Chica, Coco, where you're at currently. So, uh, Mr. Musk, move! Mr. Musk, move. Boy, that sounds like a song. <laughs> Mr. Musk, move. Move to Alabama. <laughs> yes, it's a great place to build a rocket and a great place to, to uh, have a high-tech venture. It is wonderful for what you want to do. So you should move. <laughs> or sit there and face the storms. If you just want to get blown away, stay where you're at. Uh, but if you want to have a good, solid place to build from, uh, come up to North Alabama. Go to Decatur, to, to Huntsville. Put headquarters in Huntsville, manufacturing in Decatur for, for, you know, for engineering and manufacturing. And then use the 10 Tom waterway that uh, Congressman Bevel, Tom Bevel, led the, uh, led the development of. Now, he pushed for that. So we had a Bevel Center in his honor in Huntsville, Alabama used by the Army Corps of Engineers, although he was the, 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 the uh, congressman for the district south of Huntsville, Alabama. He still got a lot of honor in our area for what he pushed in that regards, because so that can be the key to making your rockets, large rockets, easy to build, reliable, built with high quality, and maintain the low cost that you want. There's your key, Mr. Musk. Mr. Musk, move. And with that, I want to say to everyone, uh, I appreciate you, your time and watching this show. So again, if you've not subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel and uh, bang the update notification bell. Thank you.